All right, here it is. My Deluxe Reverb reissue converted to hand-wired, point-to-point, blah, 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 buzzword, 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 and modern building technique, which it is, modern po- component selection, some old-school component selection for tone, such as polyester c- capacitors, lowest noise, such as having isolated input jacks going directly to the preamp on the back. Before I get too far into this, I have another announcement, and that announcement is I'm going to make this layout available for free. So check in the description, and I've sort of ate my own dog food by building this layout first. This is actually an improved design, so you guys get to benefit my improved design after I started building this. Physically, there were some things I was like, "Ah, I could probably make that better. You guys get the opportunity to do that. Send this file into Hoffman's, you know, amps, and I'll have that exact file that you need to send into Hoffman's on my um, GitHub. So check the description below. And because this is built, the power supply section is built around vintage. You're and no um, discharge capac- uh, resistors built in. You're going to want to watch my other video on how to discharge capacitors. This is my device I built because this voltage will linger. I had this amp unplugged for more than 12 hours, and this uh, capacitor was still cooking at 200-something volts. So you're going to definitely, 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 definitely want to watch that video. Create one of these yourself. Check out that layout. Research it. Read about it. We'll talk about it in the comments section. Let's get into some aesthetics. This is sort of what I did for the mid-pot. The mid-pot is a old Fender-style knob, and I thought that was sort of appropriate. What I am thinking now is if I can find a silver equivalent, that would kind of look pretty pretty similar to an input jack, huh? So I'm not sure yet. One thing you're going to notice, if you look really close, there's a little tiny black dot. That's I measured the pot. It's 6.8, which is the original... Uh, tone stack for the mid fixed resistor on the deluxe reverb tone stack. Over here is a Fender Dual Professional tone stack, which sounds great. One thing that I discovered after building this is I plugged this in, it sounds really full, like really full bottom end, and I could basically get equivalent bass uh, two here, five here. I'm like, what is going on? I can't believe it's just the tone stack that's making the difference. What else is happening here? Well, did some more research, and I overlooked the fact that this coupling capacitor is 0.047 on the normal channel. On the vibrato channel, it is a 0.02. And these coupling capacitors are responsible for bass response rolling off. So um, here is going to be a lot more full because it's a lot more bass going through. How much bass, I'm not quite sure if changing that to a 0.02 will give me the same bass as on the trem side or the vibrato side, but I'm going to experiment and try that swap out and see where I go, how it sounds. Looking at the dual professional schematic, it's not really a a blackface schematic, so that capacitor is not a single capacitor, at least from what I found, um, to be like, oh, well... Eureka, that's, I need to change that out for whatever is in the dual professional. It's not that simple, so it's going to have to create a little, you know, going to have to test it out. But I will say that this is more a pedal-friendly platform um, for this amp, or really the dual professional in general. Hi. Um, <laughs> sorry, need more coffee. Here's my bright... Pull, push and pull. Sorry if I talked about this before. Made a couple takes here. Can't remember what I covered. But these, I'm not too crazy about it. See this wiggle room here? These are CTS pots. I'm not crazy about them. Um, CTS manufacturers, engineers, if you're listening, here. there's my feedback. This is feels flimsy. Your alpha brethrens, like this guy, is a lot better from a fit and finish feel, Um, just my opinion. If you can, I couldn't find an alpha equivalent of these, so um, I don't know. 
I, I believe Weber actually has these, but they're not in stocks, which is why I kind of sort of want to bang through this. Will I change it out later? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, maybe. It, but the problem is, at this point, it's kind of a, it would be a tough swap. Let's get into the, some wiring. So here's how I did my wiring. Very inspired, color code wise, and everything from a real 65 going up. And it, the color codes are appropriate on my layout, so go definitely check that out. I spent a morning, and my mornings are from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. before I have to get my daughter to school, uh, rewiring this. So originally I had these these going up to the tone controls, going in front of this bus wire up into you know, the, the solder um, cups here. And it just looked messy. It, it the, This all looked messy. It didn't look like an original 65 at all. Um, so I spent that morning in redoing it. I like this a lot better. I'm really happy with how that came out. You can kind of sort of see it. Just uh, th this cloth wire is not pushback wire like I found on the original fenders. This is more modern construction where it's 600 volt rated insulated wire and then they put this aesthetic cloth over it so it is cloth um, but the internal dielectric strength of that insulation is 600 volts rated uh, that's a welcomed improvement and that cloth doesn't pull back and could create some sparks which is also welcomed um, talked a little bit about the layout this is the Rob Robinette sort of how he jumped it. This from the circuit, basically from this point on, is a one-for-one -one layout of the original Deluxe Reverb layout. So I one a little tiny addition is I made an extra um, eyelet for this to jump from here to here and have like a stable sort of connection. So this capacitor is not bouncing around. This resistor is not bouncing around. I am going to hot glue this down. I'm not too crazy about this. So I did on the um, schematic or on my layout make an improvement. So here's my original that I was building off of. And that's how I um, built mine physically. But here's my improved one that you guys get to all benefit from where it's all really clean you're not going to have that goofy look like mine is. Um, these F and T caps are huge. You're going to want to make sure that you utilize the standoffs that came with the original Deluxe Reverb. Um, only because the height of that is just right. Because if you see how I'm doing this, those capacitors are almost 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 flush with the top so you're gonna to have to be very careful and pay attention to that otherwise you can when you're put mounting this into your uh, cabinet you can destroy those caps or just you know put pressure on them unnecessarily so that's something you want to look out for here's a flyover a pretty shot of the way the amp looks when you do that Everything works, by the way. Um, some I'm not going to do a tone test this time around, but very soon. This is the Trem Disconnect. It is not a Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of gain. You read about gain uh, when you disconnect that Trem. It's not a Stevie Ray Vaughan like, Tube Screamer engaged type of gain. It's just an overall volume boost. Same way with removing V1 over here. Or V2, depending on what tone stack you're going to use. If you're going to use the normal tone stack, you want to remove V2. And if you want to use the, um, the vibrato tone stack, you pull V1. Or you can leave them both in. Uh, but it's going to make the sound pretty close to, in my opinion, um, for all you John Mayer fans out there. It makes it sound, when you pull one of those tubes and disconnect the trim, it sounds, amp sounds a lot like Dead & Company from the 2018 tour or the fall of 2019 um, tour, the fall run, fun run. Here's my preamp out. So I also have this on the schematics, 
on my layout. I'm really happy with this because I was able to run this amp into the power amp of that 100 watt steel string singer section and I was getting a lot of the same tones out of there but packing 100 watts going through those two JBLs and it just punched it, it was quite eye opening um and further reason why I need to modify that um coupling capacitor because this channel was just like so much bass it almost kind of felt like a bass amp coming from that um, speaker arrangement and all the rest but so that's really cool one of the hesitations i had is i didn't know if i should ground this here locally or should i just run these um, unshielded cables the re main reason for that sort of thought was if i was to run this preamp into that there's going to be a ground loop and um, it was pretty quiet there was a little bit of a ground hum, so having a Leal P split would probably be a good idea if you're going to do that. Um, but for now, I'm going to have this as a shielded. I don't want any crosstalk getting into this amp because 99% of the time, I'm just going to be running with a single amp. It sounds great. Tone demo coming. I hope you guys appreciate this. Give me a like, something, comment uh, below. We'll chat real soon. Thank you all for following along.